you, Lord God. We ask you right now to come into this place. Just touch these, your people, Heavenly Father. Open up the minds, hearts, and spirits of your people, Lord God. And Lord God, we ask you right now to forgive us. Forgive us, Lord God, for our trespasses, sins of omission or commission, Lord God. Remove every blockage to our blessing. Open up the windows of heaven that you may pour out a blessing that we will not have room enough to receive. We honor you and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The presence of God is extremely valuable. It's extremely valuable. The anointing of God is also extremely valuable. Without it, ministry in church, doing different types of tasks and serving will be in vain and it will be totally in the flesh. This week, before I get into the teaching, and once again, welcome to those of you that are watching online to Divine Truth Christian Center, where God wants your dreams and visions realized. Uh, one of the things that I watched um, as I was, um, that I saw this week, um, it's been a very, very unique or, and challenging week for myself. I've seen some things, heard about some things through the grapevine. Um, as a pastor, I, um, I, um, always aware of things um, that's going on in the congregation, but usually the way that I become aware is not by way of gossip or by somebody telling me. Usually it's through prayer and then just observation. And one of the things that I saw this week um, as I was getting my car cleaned was that I had a ticket. You know how they have the little tickets that you get for um, um, your number, sometimes you may be going to the social security office and they say number seven, number 585, number 727. Well, it just so happened that I got the number 6666, 466. And I was like, okay, even though the car wash guy was like, that's not a good number. And he ain't even say it. <laughs> but one of the things that somebody, or one of my uh, mentors in the Lord told me and said that you guys are in your sixth year of ministry. Is that correct? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, this is one of the things that the Lord is telling me to tell you right now. He said this several months ago, but I see it coming to fruition right now. He said that you will have to fight the flesh like never before this year. You will have to fight the flesh like never before this year. And what I mean by that is your will your emotions that are contrary to the will of God. Because how you feel will get you in trouble. How you feel will sometimes poison another person's ear. When the flesh is contrary to God, it sticks out like a sore thumb. And I was like, it wasn't just one stick, it was four of them. The flesh, the flesh, the flesh, the flesh. And so the only way that you get rid of the flesh is through the word of God, the dividing word of God. And so, Divine Truth family, my admonition to you at this hour as we go forward into the fall, which is actually a time where there could be a great end gathering of the saints, is fight the flesh. Fight how you feel. Because sometimes how you feel can override what God has said. Remember, we were only told, <laughs> really, in essence, to do two things. That's love God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love is, a, is really what's needed right now. Um, even when it comes to our 40 days of love thing that um, so happened to be one of the co-hosts, and it just kind of just fell in my lap, but we wanted to be a participant in that. That's on the external, but we need to do it among each other. We need to do it among our households. Uh, we need to do it to people on the phone. Just be careful to not let your words be in the flesh, but let them be led by the Spirit. If you're feeling some kind of weight, even right now, about any 
anybody in here on the throne of God today, then you might be in the flesh. Amen. So let's put that flesh aside and let's magnify the word because if you're ruled by uh, emotions, it's kind of like one of the things that Proverbs says. It says the angry man, uh, he can't, an uh, angry man can't rule the city. A person that does not have a control over their emotions or the scripture actually says a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. It's kind of like having a scripture here and then cussing right here. You have a praise and worship of God right here and then you, you want to cuss somebody out. <laughs> You have a smile on your face one moment, and then you mean as hell the next moment. I just want to be frank. And you can't be both and, because if you're both and, then maybe you're full of the flesh. Amen. And sometimes we have to get to, get to the point in our own spiritual walk where we have to sit ourselves down when we're not right with the Lord. Amen. All right. Okay, Jamar, I think I can go on now. Revelation chapter 2, verse 18, and this is the next passage of scripture tonight, and uh, we're going to be out in 30 minutes. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. We'll see what the Lord says, though. That's what I say, but we'll see what he says. So Revelation chapter 2, verse 18 says, and to the angel of the church in Thyatira write these things, says the Son of God, who has his age like the flame of fire and feet like fry, fine brass. Keep on going. I know your works. Here it is. Love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. All right, sounds good. Here he goes again. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman. Oh, here we go. I didn't even, this, this is just so poignant. You allowed that woman, Jezebel, and it's not really the female type, it's the spirit. You allowed that spirit, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Keep on going. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed and those who commit adultery into her great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children. In other words, she will not have any spiritual sons and daughters with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you I say, man, this is a lot of words to this church. Now to you I say, and to the rest in thy retire, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depth of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessel, as I also have received from my father. And I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. My, oh, my. Amen. The topic for this evening, once again, is the continuation of the end of the matter. Tonight will be a focus on Thyatira. Thyra Tyra. Yeah. So, as we dive into the teaching for this evening, and we're going to go back and forth with the text, as you can see on the screen right there, you see the next church, which is Thyra Tyra. Last week, we began to talk um, at earnest about Pergamum and how that was the seed of Satan. But this week, we're going to go to the other part of the um, church that is representative not only in past times, but also in contemporary times as well. It's a lot of uncomfortable topics that are in that particular church, but sometimes uh, ministry is uncomfortable. Sometimes uh, there are certain types of spirits that need to be cast out of individuals, cast out of a house so that the word of God and the spirit that God wants to have within his people has to go forth. It is not strange that while I saw that ticket number that says 6666, 
right after that, I'm just telling you, not soon after that, I was, I was going on to a, another destination to look at some supplies for our children's area. I rolled up into the back of somebody's car. I didn't hit them, but I saw a bumper sticker. And the thing usually doesn't catch me because, you know, people have all different types of bumper stickers. But this one particular bumper sticker, as it caught my attention, it said, I bind. I bind. I think I'm going to go there because I think God is trying to lead me into a different direction tonight. I might as well go there. So when I saw this particular photograph, I bind, I got a little bit closer. And I'm sure the person was thinking I was going to carjack them or something like that. But I was like, you people just don't have those type of words on the back of their car. But it said this. It says, I bind you in the name of Jesus and declare that all of your works, roots, fruits, tentacles and spirits are dead works in my life. Amen. And I think many of you also need to say that as well. Do not let the leaven of the Pharisees poison you. Don't let negativity begin to seep through your mouth, through the phone, through Facebook, and into someone else. Fight the flesh. Fight the flesh. Fight the flesh. Fight the flesh. Fight how you feel. Amen. And as Lyrical Lively said, what does the word say about conflict resolution? What does the word say about circumcision of the heart? I believe that some of us in this house, even tonight, before we leave this place, need to go to the altar in prayer and bind up some things and cast out some things. Because whenever there's flesh, the little ones or the little sheep begin to scatter. So I'm just speaking prophetically at this moment in time that God is not playing with his people. He's not playing with these leaders. There's one particular prominent pastor from Atlanta that had a photograph on Facebook even today, and he looks like death. So God is not playing with his people. He's definitely not playing with his leaders. Amen? Amen. And so because I know that God is not playing at this hour and he's going around the lampstick snuffing individuals out, I want to make sure that stays intact here. But it is not one flame that makes a house of the Lord great. It's all of the little lights that are in here. Do you, and this is something you want to ask yourself, do you have a dark light right now? Do you have a dark light? Because it's one thing to say and tout love all the time, but sometimes we need to deal with sinfulness or a spirit as this particular church is dealing with right now, the seductive spirit of trying to control others. All right, let's keep on going. Let's let the Holy Spirit. So what is this all about? Well, one of the things that we want to ask the question about is what will happen to those who follow the example of Jezebel. Now, all throughout the charismatic church, you may have heard of this topic about Jezebel, Jezebel the woman. This is in old times when you see a Jezebel. This classically was referred to a woman who was a floozy or, or you know, somebody who was a, a lady of the night, as my mama would say. And they would gallivant themselves right into the congregation, sit down on the front row with their legs wide open so that the preacher could see them. That's the common concept that individuals have in their mind. But then the text right here is talking about something altogether different. Because you never know how seductive the spirit of control is. Amen. A passive of aggressive spirit is the way to control another person. On the outside, you're saying yes, but on the inside, you're like, and your fruit is showing that. So what we want to do is we want to expose that spirit, not only tonight, not only online, but even if we're carrying some of those things ourselves. Amen. Amen. Aubrey, I need you to come and sit on the front row. Are you going to be still? All right. God bless you. So what will happen to those that follow the example of Jezebel? Well, in slide number 21, you'll see and just a pictorial example, but here's the answer to it. They will, number one, suffer the consequences of their behavior. A bed of suffering and sickness awaits them. 
In other words, it is very likely that Jezebel was not this individual's real name, but a name given to characterize her actions or the spirit that was being carried. In other words, in the Old Testament, Jer Jezebel was married to King Ahab and introduced Baal worship with its sexual immorality into the northern kingdom. Amen. There was two kingdoms. There was the northern kingdom, and then there was the southern kingdom. So Ahab and Jezebel are emblematic of a type of spirit that certain people carry. Oftentimes, Jezebel is carried by the woman, but it can be carried by men, especially nowadays when you have effeminate men in the pulpit. But oftentimes, you also have, on the uh, flip side, Ahab spirit that's carried by men. The Jezebel spirit is the one that seeks to control and to manipulate and to be like a puppet and pull heartstrings and say, well, baby, you don't have to go to church right now. Why don't you just stay up and lay with me in my bosom? You don't need to hear what the preacher says. And I've seen that. But on the flip side, Ahab is like, I seriously want to have as much control as she does, but I'm going to sit here and I'm going to soak and I'm going to pout and I'm not going to do anything. And I'm going to allow for the entire household to go crazy. Amen. And both of them are culpable. So King Ahab was actually more treacherous than Jezebel. That's what a lot of theologians don't like to harp on because he was the leader of the entire thing. He was a man that did not have his household in control. This likewise is the same way for this particular church in Thyatira. It's emblematic of a pastor that lets his congregation go absolutely bananas, lose its mind, does not call sin, sin does not call for holiness, does not call for righteousness, does not sit anybody down. In other words, people can do whatever they want to do. They can sleep with everybody, do whatever thing that they want to do. But God is control of this ministry. Amen. And so we have to deal with these things. If you call yourself a child of God, you can't be shackled. You can't do it and then say, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. If you are doing that, then you're being religious now that you know better. All right. I'm trying to help you to not block up your blessings because that's how the enemy seeks to control us through seducing words and through seducing spirits. To seek, you pull, seek to pull you over to the opposite side. I, you, if you're lonely now, wait until tonight, girl or boy. Fight the flesh. Fight the flesh. Fight the flesh, divine truth. Fight the flesh. Bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. Misery does love company, but that does not mean that you have to start the company. In the next slide, the question is, what are these so-called secrets of Satan? Well, men despise the simple teachings of the gospel and seek deeper insights that are not theirs. They often speak of these discoveries as products of wisdom and scholarship, which go far beyond what they consider to be shallow thinking of ordinary Christians. This is the seductive spirit of more knowledge, empty knowledge. I put another post on my Facebook page that says that Intelligent people can believe stupid things when they don't have God as their foundation in so many words. Amen. And that's what's the problem with many of our see, – see, there's one thing that God opened my eyes up today, and I'm so glad that I stumbled upon it, and that's this movement called Mere Christianity, another seductive spirit that's entered into the house of the Lord. This form of mere Christianity basically says that as long as the people of God, regardless of their sect, Jehovah's Witness, Mormons, Christians, Roman Catholics, whatever it is, Apostolic Church or whatever, as long as they have the fundamentals or the essentials of the faith, then why should there be any type of qualm? But if some of it's not true, then all of it's not true. So this mere Christianity is trying to creep into the house of the Lord, basically says that as long as they believe that Jesus rose from the dead, then that's it. Well, the devil believed that Jesus rose from the dead. 
So we have to be careful of just amplifying the tenets of the faith or just the bottom line areas of the faith. Amen. This is the reason why sometimes in the house of the Lord there could be divided or, or people from the political circles and as they try to enter themselves into our particular arena. We have to be careful of that. These things are called satanic secrets. This is where you go searching on the internet to find God through a man-made system. Let me help you. The internet and YouTube are not inspired. They're not inspired works. The only thing that is inspired by God is the word of God. Don't worry about that. The only thing that's inspired by God is the word of God. So you have to be careful of the seducing spirit of knowledge, which is, fo which is fruit is from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's when you just know of things, but you don't know anything. Amen. Sometimes I believe that there is such a deep thirst for knowledge outside of the Bible to try to convince ourselves that there really is a God. You, my friend, may need to really go to Jesus and truly give your life over to him because you may not be saved just yet. <sighs> it's a rough day, but we have to crucify the flesh. That was the call of us. We crucify the flesh. Die to the flesh. I die daily. I, 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 a little leaven leavens a whole lump. If we let that thing creep in, then our witness will be false. It's like you know that, <laughs> once again, if I mean as all get out in the lobby and I come up here saying, hi, how are everybody doing? Then my witness is going to be tainted to, towards you, isn't it? You're not going to listen to anything that I have to say. Such wisdom is you. So we have to be careful of what we say when pastor's not listening. Because it's not about whether I listen or not, because I'm not in control of anything. I, God is in control. So I don't want, and no good pastor wants their people to be scared of them. That's a Jezebel spirit as well. To threaten. Respect is one thing. Fear is another. People who fear you will turn on you in a moment. But people who respect you, they'll go to war back and forth for you. So be careful of satanic secrets. Let's go back to the verse and let's break it down line upon line and precept upon precept and then we're going to get out of here. As always, we're just going to focus on this one church. Once again, and to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, these things that says the son of, these things says the son of God who has eyes like the flame of fire and his feet like brass. Once again, the flame of fire represents God's ability to be able to look at the soul of mankind. You've heard it say before that eyes are the window to the soul. All right. Jaden, I need you to sit up. It says that eyes are the windows to the soul. And so if that is the case, what are you looking at? I'm just going to go with the spirit this, this evening. What are you looking at? What are you beholding with your eyes? Because whatever you behold, you become. If you behold foolishness on Facebook and you try to educate yourself with a one word meme that is not cited by anybody, then you'll become that. If you consume your uh, uh, eyes with, with fights and with false doctrine and with UFOs and other things <laughs> in the middle of the night, then you'll start wondering, is the scripture really real or is it a reference book? Amen. We have to be careful of things as they creep into the midst of God's people. And to the angel of the church of Thyatira write these things, it says the son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire. He's a consuming fire and his feet are like fine brass. Beautiful are the feet of those that carry the gospel. In this particular case, Jesus is the embodiment of the gospel. We got that next verse. Let's go ahead. I know your works. He's talking to the church. Love. So a church that has a Jezebel spirit running rampant has individuals that love each other. They serve, they have faith, and they're patient. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. In other words, they have great influence. They started off small, but now they have great influence in the community. But they have a spirit that's running rampant. Let's keep on going. 
Nevertheless, this is how God is balanced with all of us. So never, ever believe that um, there's certain moments and times where God will not correct you. He'll always tell you the good. This is love in proper context. I love my sons. That's why I, sometimes when I stop during service, and I love the, the little boys in here and the little girls that are in here, so that's why I, if I stop during service and if I say something, that's because I care about you. I'm not trying to embarrass you because I want you to, as the uh, elder said, I want you to mind. I want you to understand that this is the house of the Lord. And so I want to give you good things and blessings, but I also want to tell you what you need to improve in. Okay? Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that spirit who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants and to, to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Now, this is a host and spirit type of verse. In this verse, is not ta only talking about the physical act of being hot in the pants. We get that because everybody's human. Everybody's just lonely, and, and there's a world that's filled with pornography and sex everywhere. Instagram got strippers galore, men and women. So it's con continual bombardment, and never don't let it be a time when you get into an argument and something pops up after the argument. It's an open door. I understand that. It is, it is something that is a real phenomenon, but it's deeper than that because the sexual immorality is more of a spiritual intercourse. In other words, God <laughs> in Old Testament times had used Homer, um, excuse me, Gomer and, and Hosea as an example. Gomer was the Old Testament female prodigal daughter. In the New Testament, it was the prodigal son. Gomer was the prodigal daughter in the Old Testament. She was very unfaithful to her husband. Her husband was very faithful. He, she, he, she kept on going out into the wilderness over and over again. She was used up by the men. She had children out of wedlock. It was, uh, but God specifically told Hosea, I want you to marry her so you can understand how I feel about my children Israel, about how they are so unfaithful to me, but I'm faithful to them. It is like a pastor that has to be consistent among some individuals that are inconsistent. Amen. So there's a level of suffering that he had to go through because that is what allowed for him to prophesy properly. So in this particular verse right here, when we worship other idols and when we serve other gods, it's like us having sexual intercourse with someone other than our spouse. Because aren't we the bride of Christ? So if we're the bride of Christ, why are we making love to things that are not him? Amen. Be careful of what you, what you are making love to. I talk about spiritual things, not physical things. And it, if anything can pull you away from your lover, the one that enters into the garden, I entered the garden alone. Whatever can pull you away from your lover in the garden, that being Christ, then you're committing spiritual adultery. So this is the hidden things that people don't like to talk about because we figure that if we're married and we're not stepping out, then we're not really stepping out. But are we? It's deeper than that. And in order to be faithful, not only in your regular marriage, in, in earthly marriage, you have to crucify the flesh. But also in your marriage to Christ, you also have to crucify the flesh. He's righteous, no doubt. He covers your sin, no doubt. But that does not exonerate us from coming towards him. I always say this before. You know that you're a Christian because when you hear the word of God, you don't have a spirit of condemnation that comes over you. You have a spirit of conviction. In other words, I want to do right. I want to get it right. I want to get it in the right order. I want to get my mind right. Lord God, forgive me. Lord God, let me get down on my knees. Let me pray before I say another word to another individual, before I witness to them, before I speak to them. Let me make sure that I have a right relationship with you. I haven't came home. To, I did not come home tonight. And pray. I've been looking at other things. And my attention has been elsewhere. Forgive me for neglecting my attention to you, my lover in the garden. This also talks about this 
spirit that says, I have a prophetic spirit. Now, I'll tell you this right now. You have people who have television shows on your favorite Christian channel that do not have a church, but they have a gift of exploiting people and they're seducing individuals day by day. Thank you. Be careful of false prophets and prophetesses this week. Amen. I would go to another level with that, but I think I'm going to refrain from it. But just be careful. And this is not a knock against uh, women who lead and teach. I believe that. I believe a woman can teach. I believe that she can preach. But if that woman has a Jezebel spirit and has a spirit of feminism coming from the pulpit, you better be careful. Because some of the men that are in the crowd did not have a good relationship with their father. And so because mama was always there as an authority figure, they gravitate towards that spirit. But God is our father. And we move on from that. So be careful of false testimonies, false prophets. In other words, they have dreams and visions. But remember, prophecy edifies. It builds up. It prunes. That's what a prophet does. It prunes. Prophets don't grow churches. You've never seen a national prophet that had a large church, not a true one, because all prophets are solo. They walk alone and everybody's upset when they see them. Oh, my God, here comes Jeremiah. (sighs) Oh, my Lord, here comes Ezekiel. Oh, my Lord, here comes Nathaniel. Here come Nathan. Nathan, oh, I have a story of a little ewe lamb that was um, (laughs) David, and that little ewe lamb was, was basically misappropriated. David had unrighteous indignation, said, I would tear that person limb from limb. Well, the person is you. You looked upon Bathsheba and you sent the ewe lamb, meaning Uriah, out before the war in order to get rid of him because you wanted that woman more than you wanted the Lord. So as of this moment right now, God is not going to take the kingdom away from you, but in your bloodline, you will have suffering. You will have an Absalom that will rise up among your, your among yourselves, and you will have people that will surround you in your old age to let you know that I'm still with you, but there are still going to be consequences to your actions. That is the hour that we're living in. God loves us enough to let us live in our consequences versus killing us. I'm glad sometimes that God allows for us to live while we're paying our consequences of our own actions. That's mercy. Amen. So once again, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols, both of these things are feeding the flesh. The flesh. Let's keep on going on. And I got a few more minutes. And I gave her time. Here it is. Look at the mercy of God. I gave this leader of the ministry time to repent of their sexual immorality, and they did not repent. Here's one of the things that I'm working with. Um, several individuals, especially, especially my 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 my, my uh, son, and I think they might have picked this up. I don't know from where, but they might have picked it up. So I'm gonna see if I can uh, put it back down. There's this thing. Um, and I think even some of us don't do it, to where when I catch them doing something, they say, sorry. Like it's an automatic reaction. Sorry. But I like to give this example. If you keep on doing it, you're not sorry. Amen. And so sometimes as saints, we also say sorry to God. But we don't change. Remember, sheep struggle, pigs wallow. If you have a struggle with something and you know, God, I'm just trying, I'm just trying, and that's a thorn in your side, and God said, no, you can't pray it away, he knows how to handle that. Because we're all sheep that will eventually be led to the slaughter and have to suffer for his namesake. But if you're wallowing in and you like it, because I've never uh, known a pig that did not like slop. You could put lipstick on them, you could clean them up, you could enter them into a farm for the first place of ribbon. But as soon as they see some corn on the cob and some slop, they will find themselves back to that spot. Therefore, here's a word, don't cast your pearls before swine-minded people. 
The Bible says don't even talk to an atheist. Don't waste your time. Don't try to logically deduce themselves because while, they, while you're trying to logically reach out to them, they're seducing you with that controlling spirit. I must talk to them. Oh, the spirit has got me. So God gives us time to repent from having our focus in other areas. I just don't feel like it. I wish I could say I don't feel like it and actually carry it out as a pastor. Sometimes I don't. Y'all have heard preachers say this many, many years. I've heard it all growing up, and I used to be like, ah. But now I understand when somebody says, well, ah, I didn't feel like preaching today. I didn't feel like coming. I didn't feel like being nice to my spouse. I didn't feel like it. But when you truly love, you go past how you feel. That's the mystery of marriage, not only in the household, but to God. You go past how you feel, because if you can only serve while you're in a good mood, then you can't be a leader. All right. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. See, God always gives second chances. People always like to talk about, and I'll just pivot this one point, about the slaughter of the Canaanites, which is, what some people who are ignorant of the Bible like to use as a way of saying that God is very cruel of how God allowed for the slaughter of women and children and infants. But what they fail to realize is that the Canaanites were an evil and wicked people and God gave them 400 years to turn it around. And then he finally says, stop. Remember, there's only one person in the New Testament that can claim that God, that, that God can say that he hurt or killed an innocent person, and that was Jesus. Everybody else is guilty. Repentance is important, people of God. Sometimes we need to just do right. There was a moment in time uh, many years ago, as I close, where when I was feeling some kind of way with uh, Lady Martin, and this is when I was uh, serving in a you know, just kind of meet him in capacity. Because I knew my spirit wasn't right, I didn't get up and I tried to fake it in front of people. I just sat down until I got out of my feelings. We need to get to that point. And if it's consistent, then you need to consistently sit there. Yeah, I've done that and it's helped me. Sometimes we need to put ourselves in check. Let every man examine themselves. Next verse. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bay, and those who commit adultery with her to into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. God loves us, but there are still consequences to our actions. We have to be careful of what we put our mouth on. Because what good is it for you to have a good conversation and be like oh, in church, but then at the house you're talking about everybody. And then, Mom, what good is that? Even if you think that that's something that is appropriate or you being truthful, you keeping it 100. Remember, never, ever, ever count hearsay as fact. There's always three sides to the story. What that person said, what the other person said, and then the truth. So if you're just talking with one-on-one -on -one with a person about somebody else without that person being there, you may lack integrity. And you need to check yourself. So indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her into greater tribulation until they repent of their deeds. I don't know about you, but the older I've gotten, the less meat I have on my backside. It's thinned up. Now, when I was young, I had a, a bunch of meat on my bottom. But now that I've gotten older, if I sit down too long, I've got to stand up because I feel my bones sitting down to the seat. I said that to say this, the older you get, the less whoopers you want. <laughs> Y'all, I'm trying to help you. See, when you're young, you could go through hell and hell and back again. Oh, my goodness. I remember so much drama in my early 20s. I went through it, went through it, went through this, went through that, went through this, went through that. I could bounce up out of bed. I could go through the consequences for three months. And then after a while, as I got older, I'm like, I don't have a tolerance for these consequences. 
I want to be on the honor roll this time. Amen. Now, I'll admit to you, this summer, I had a couple of Ds this summer. Talk about in my, in my own mindset, in, in my own spiritual life, I had a couple of Ds, but I'm, I feel my grades rising up right now. We have to be transparent like that. Amen. So when you see sickness and things like that going on between the leader, you better look at that. Remember, God does not send sickness and disease to his children. Satan does. It is God that protects the sickness from happening. God doesn't use sickness to try to make you better. Remember, we're in a world of sin. But you also need to stop eating the pork chops. You stop, need to stop eating that bad food. Don't pray. Pray that God will give you the right food to eat so that you will not have to be in affliction. Amen. And so last but not least, let's go ahead and finish these verses and we're done for the evening. It says, I will kill her children and death and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. In other words, what you deserve. This right here is the example of when a leader falls and the church falls and no new churches spring up. This has happened so many times in this city. Where a great prominent man or woman of God has been leading a congregation, but then they allow for that seducing spirit to come in, the leader falls, and then, as the scripture says, the shepherd is smitten and the sheep scatter. There are no new churches that pop up, and all of the spiritual children die. The legacy is gone. Because it's one thing to start off strong, it's another thing to end up strong. Amen. So all of you that have been serving the Lord for 20 some odd plus years and you still smiling and saying howdy, howdy, hallelujah, anyhow, if you doing that, then God bless you. Amen. You done seen some war. And what we want to do with our millennials and even some of our younger people is that we have to teach them how to fight as well. How to fight the devil. 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 Despite how you feel. Amen. Come on, Al, I'm done. I told you I'd keep, keep my word. Is that the last verse, Jamar? All right, let's keep on going. <sighs> and it says, now to you I say, and to the rest in Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden. But hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes, here it is, and this is where we're going to stop, and will keep my works until the end. To him I will give power over the nations, or you will have influence. All right. So I want to admonish you, and I want to continue to encourage you to not allow for that controlling, seducing spirit to come in. It manifests itself in different ways. Sometimes it can manifest itself as sexual immorality. We know about that. And some of us have problems. But God does not want a promiscuous lover. You're more valuable than that. Amen. You're more valuable than that. So just as like a woman or as a man, you don't need to lay with just anybody. Likewise, spiritually, you don't need to open up yourself, your spiritual womb, just to anything. Because the devil has seed, too. And he can enter in, too. He is the false priest trying to enter into your temple so that false worship and strange fire can come forward. But we want to throw water on that with the anointing right now in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to pray for each and every individual in this house that is struggling in the flesh with how they feel about someone, something, some specific type of situation, some type of circumstance. Father, we thank you, and I pray right now in the name of Jesus over these, your children, Lord God. I pray right now, Lord God, that whatever they're going through, whatever situation it may be, Lord God, that you strengthen them and that they are, have the ability to conquer their flesh. Whatever emotions are ruling their mind, ruling their hearts, how they feel, if it's unforgiveness, teach them how to forgive. If it's grudges, teach them how to let it go. If it's hatred, teach them how to love. 
If it's envy, teach them how to keep their eyes on their own resources. If it's anger, Lord God, teach them how to be merciful. And Lord God, if it's a spirit of negativity and complaining, Lord God, let them be a solution giver. Father, I ask you right now, and I bind the spirit, the seducing spirit, the controlling spirit that's controlling our will, our mind, and our emotions. We submit ourselves to you, Heavenly Father. We bow ourselves before you, Heavenly Father. We go to the altar before you, Heavenly Father, casting our crowns down before you. Let us humble ourselves before you, Lord God. You are a mighty king. You are strong and mighty power. And Lord God, last but not least, we repent. We repent for our wrongdoing, for our slackness or our laziness or, or not taking you seriously as we should. Give us the joy of your salvation. Clean us with hyssop. Create in us, thank you, Holy Spirit, a clean heart so that we can serve you. We love you. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I believe that this is the time for us to be broken before the Lord. And I believe that that's what I feel the Lord pivoting to us toward, is that we have forgotten how to be broken before him. If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their, my wicked, their wicked ways. Then I will hear from my heavenly throne and heal their land. We need to humble ourselves as a body. We need to humble ourselves as the child, children of God. We really need to seek his face in this dark hour. For there is a great shift and a great change that is on the horizon. The, the, the trumpet is blasting loud right now in this year of Jubilee. Great change is going to take place, and we have to be ready. Fight, Fight the, the flesh. flesh, divine truth. Fight, Fight the, the flesh. flesh. Fight the flesh. Fight the flesh. Bind that spirit and cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. Let us not be thirsty men and women of God thirsting after things that do not come from the eternal spring. Amen. Amen. Be blessed with you, God. If you want to give, I know there's a lot that's dealing with that. You give as the Lord leads you, but if you want to come to this altar right now, Al, if you could just play for the next, you know, five or so minutes. I think many of us need to go before the Lord at this hour about some things that we need to change. Amen. Take this time out to let the scriptures that you post on Facebook be real. <laughs>